Um, if you're watching this video, the first part is us going over four, six questions. The second part will be the review. So if you just want to see the review, fast forward. Okay, um, 25. It says evaluate. Dang, I'm still in the wrong lesson. That's not the question. One moment, please. This is 25. Oh, blurry 25. Um, okay, so 25 says solve each equation. Um, because, let me make sure of something before I say that to you. Yep. 25. Okay. Um, because these are both perfect squares right now, you don't have to complete the square first. They are both perfect squares. So what you do when they're already both perfect squares is you factor it. So it's basically like we take those first two steps out, right? Take those first two steps out, just factor it. This will be plus. Square root of this is 5x. Square root of 1 is 1. And we square it. And that equals 9. So now you square root both sides and you get 5x plus 1 equals what? For the two of you that are actually paying attention right now. Positive, negative. Positive or negative, plus or minus 3. Um, so then from here, I would just, with this one, because it's a two-step equation, I would just set up the two equations. 5x plus 1 equals 3. And 5x plus 1 equals negative 3. So take away 1. 5x equals 2, divide by 5, so x is 2 fifths for that one. Um, this one, take away 1, you get 5x equals negative 4, divide by 5, so x equals a negative 4 fifths. Make sense? So yeah. are you supposed to solve? Yes, you're, all of these you're solving for x. It's just a matter of do you have to complete the square first, but if these are both perfect squares to start, then you don't have to complete the square because you already have the perfect square trinomial. So we can do that by x plus... No, no, no. You have to solve all the way to x. Oh. X equals what? Yeah, keep going all the way. Other questions from the homework? Is that a hand? Yeah. yeah. Which one? Um, I was just looking back at um, 29. Like 29. Okay, so those ones, all you had to do was complete the square. You don't have to yeah. solve anything because there is no... There's nothing to solve. So it just looks like this. Um, completing the square is always the 1 half B and square it, right? So your B value right now is negative 1. So you're going 1 half of negative 1. And then you're squaring that. Um, yeah, this one's a little funky because you're getting a fraction. Half of negative 1 is a negative 1 half. But negative 1 half squared becomes a positive 1 and a positive 4. So this number becomes 1 fourth. That's a little funky. They're normally not fractions there. I think I didn't, I, I didn't um, square it. That's why. Oh, okay. Do you do 1 half? Yeah, I got 0. I got negative 0.5. That was because I didn't put the square. Right, half. yep. Any other questions? Zoe? Oh, can we do 40? Yes. All right, so 40, you have x squared minus 3x equals x minus 1. Um, it says solve by completing the square. So if we just move everything over right now, um, you get x squared minus 4x. If we move this 1 over, that's plus 1 equals 0. Um, that doesn't work. So we are going to take the one out of there. Essentially, you could just have left the one on the other side. So x squared minus 4x plus whatever we complete the square with equals negative 1. Um, so you're doing half of your b value, and we're squaring that. So negative 2 squared would be a positive 4. And if we add 4 to the left side, then we have to add 4 to the right side. So factor 
this now, that's going to be x minus 2 squared equals negative 1 plus 4 is 3. And then from there, now we're going to square root and square root. So x minus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. And then your last step is just to add 2. Um, I would just write it like this, 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. Um, if you said plus or minus rad 3 plus 2, it's not terrible. It's just not the best. Um, but there's nothing you can combine there because one's a radical and one is not. Okay. Other questions? You're welcome. 39 is x squared plus 12 equals 10x. So move this over. You get x squared minus 10x plus 12 equals 0. And then we're going to get the 12 out of there because we want to make it a perfect square. So x squared minus 10x plus something equals negative 12 plus whatever that something is, right? Um, so half of negative 10, and we square it, um, so that's going to be 25. So add 25 to both sides. If we factor this, that's x minus 5 squared. Add this together, we get 13. So we're going to take the square root of both of those. x minus 5 equals plus or minus square root of 13, and then add the 5. So it'll be 5 plus or minus the square root of 13. Okay. Okay, um, let's do the worksheet. I am not going to do every single problem with you, like I said. I'm going to kind of jump around. Where did I put the worksheet? Oh, here it is. Um, so if you see one that you're like, yes, please do that for me, great, I will do it. If you're fully confident, 4-5 to 4-7, and you just want to work and get your worksheet done and ignore me, I don't care. I'm just here to help whoever needs the help. If you feel like you've got it and you just need to practice it, go at your own pace, okay? Um, but I am going to do kind of a little bit of everything. So we're not just going to go right in order, just so I get to a little bit of everything in time. What do we have? 9.50, so 20 minutes right now. We might be able to get this done. We'll see. All right. Let's just start with the first one. Sure. Um, square root of 120. This is just simplifying. How do you simplify the square root of 120? In other words, is there a perfect square that you can divide 120 by? Who's going to work with me right now so I know who I'm looking at? You're going to work with me right now? I mean, I know four can. Four works. Yes. Um, so four and 30 then. So this would be two. Can you break down 30 at all? There's no perfect square that 30 is divisible by, right? So two rad 30 would be your simplest form. Um, let's do... I'll do four for sure. Pick one other from those simplifying. Do you have a preference? Two, three, five, or six? Three. Number three. Um, number three is actually much simpler than it looks. So you have the square root of 24 and the square root of six. What can you do with that? Divide it. Divide it. You get the square root of four, which is two. Isn't that lovely? Ditch all the radicals. Um, okay, so that's number three. Let's look at number four. What do you think you'd do with number four? Solve it. How? What do you know about the square root of 19? <laughs> 18. Nine yes, you can. See what happened there? I was thinking about nine. My bad. Um, so this would be three, three plus three rad two over six. Can you do anything else? Mm -hmm. You can divide all of it. The threes and the six are all divisible by three. So you get one plus one rad two, which you can just write as rad two. If you put the one there, it's not a problem. Over what? Two. two. Divide by three. 
to over two. One, um, because three over six is one over two, right? I'm just reducing that fraction, essentially. So in that other three, just cross the It's a one, but you don't have to put a one in front of it. It's one times rad two. That's just rad two. Yeah, so you can put the one there. It's not wrong to put it there. It's just not as simple as you could go. Okay, jumping around here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do one of each type of these. The graphing one, 9 and 10, I'm going to save that till the end so I don't have to jump back and forth. Um, but I'll do one of each of these. So if you have a preference, like right now, if you have a preference 7 versus 8, tell me before seven. I do them. 7? Yeah. Okay. Um, so solving by factoring, and this is exactly how it looks on the quiz. I say solve by factoring, solve by using the quadratic formula, solve by fill in the blank, okay? You have to solve using that, me that method <coughs> for full credit, all right? Um, so number seven here, what's the first thing you should do? Add the 24. Yep, we're going to move 24 over to the other side. So it's x squared minus 11x plus 24 equals 0. Now, how do you factor? Star method or, I know Major does a different one. Is there someone else in here that does a different? I think Michaela does a different one. Um, whatever method you use to factor, right? So star method you would say, what can I multiply to get 24 that I can add to get negative 11? Your A term is 1. Uh, what's that going to be? Almost. Mm -hmm. Both of them negative. Negative 8 and negative 3. So this is going to be x minus 8 times x minus 3 equals zero. So what are your x values? Negative eight, negative three. Eight, and three. eight and three, right? You're looking for x minus eight to equal zero, so you have to add eight. X would be a positive eight. X minus three equals zero. You'd have to add the three. You'd get a positive three. So x equals eight or three. Questions on that? Nope. Factoring? Okay. Um, graphing we'll come back to, so I don't have to jump around so much. 11 or 12? Do you have a preference? 11. 11. Um, so by finding square roots, this is the only one where we don't want it to, well, that's not true. Completing the square, we don't want it to necessarily equal zero. It can or can't. Um, this one, we don't want set equal to zero. We're not factoring it. We're solving by finding square roots, so we have to isolate the x squared on this one, right? What do you do first? Not yet. You have to add the 32. Yeah, get the 32 to the other side. So you get 2x squared equals 32, and then divide by 2. So x squared is 16. What's your answer? There you go. That's the one. When you take the square root, right, make sure you do plus or minus x equals plus or minus 4. Just remember with these, 90% of the time, you have two answers. So don't forget that on your quiz. Look for two answers unless it's a unique problem. Yeah. Like if it was something where um, it was x minus 2 squared equals 0, you'd be saying x minus 2 equals 0 and x minus 2 equals 0, right? So if those both equal 0, it's both a positive 2. That's just one answer. So basically, solve it all the way through. And if you get two different values, you have two answers. If you square rooted something, the plus and minus will be your two answers. Um, and very rarely do you just get the one because it's a duplicate essentially answer okay um completing the square 13 or 14 13. oh who said 14 
You said 14? I feel like Chris has picked all of them, so I'm willing to. I, <laughs> we'll do both. Completing the square. How about? We'll do both. Um, all right. Is this a perfect square, number 13? No. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to move that 7 over. And it's going to be x squared plus 6x plus something equals 7. Don't forget to add that something to both sides. What is that something? 6 divided by 2 squared. Mm -hmm. So half of 6, or 6 divided by 2, and then square it. So that's going to be 9. Add it to both. Um, so then we factor the left side. What is the factored form of x squared plus 6x plus 9? x plus 3. x plus 3 squared. Yep, so x plus 3 squared equals 16. Take the square root of both, which makes you do what? Plus or minus. Plus or minus, yep. Um, and then from here, if you take away 3, we're saying x equals negative 3 plus or minus 4. That is not the simplest answer you can give. Don't stop there because you can actually add and subtract 4 to that, right? So negative 3 plus 4 is? Negative 3 plus 4 is 1, right? Negative 3 minus 4 is negative 7. Okay. Um, okay. 14 is a little bit tricky because it's tempting to say that that's already a perfect square trinomial. Does anyone know why it's not? The negative four. You cannot have a minus here if it's a perfect square trinomial because something times itself will not get you a negative four, okay? So we do have to still move that out of there. X squared minus four X plus, remember it has to be plus something equals, move that 4 over, so 4 plus whatever that same something is. Um, what is your completed square number? One. Not 1. It's half of your B term, four. and we're squaring it. So it's a 4. The only difference is it's a positive 4, not the negative 4 like this one was, right? Um, so we're going to add 4. The factored form of that Plus or minus? X plus four squared equals eight. Is it minus because mm -hmm. the first one? Minus, yep. It's a minus. And X minus what? Two. two. Yep, take the square root of that four. So X minus two squared equals eight. And now you can square root both. So this is going to be, you don't need parentheses anymore, X minus two. What's the square root of eight in simplest radical form? Yep, 2 rad 2, right? This is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. So 2 rad 2. Don't forget your plus or minus there because we took a square root. Um, so then your last step is just add the 2. Okay, now here's the deal. A lot of times people want to make that 4 rad 2 and 0 rad 2. You cannot combine those 2s because this 2 has to be multiplied by a radical before we can add, right? PEMDAS says we multiply and divide before we add and subtract. So the fact that we can't multiply this into something, something simpler, excuse me, um, is why we can't then add or subtract them either, okay? So two plus or minus two rad two. Um, okay, quadratic formula. Let's do 16, because that one's a lot fancier. 15, um, you'll come out with a number. There you go. 15 is one answer, Jada. So maybe just make a little note of that in case we don't get there, get there today. Um, so number 16, quadratic formula. Like I said, I will give you this on your quiz, OK? So don't spend a bunch of time trying to memorize it. We're going to say x equals a negative b, so negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared. So 4 squared, you don't need parentheses there. I just do it so that when it's negative, you don't forget it. Um, minus 4 times a 
times C all over 2 times the A. Okay, so there's your setup. Um, simplify your radical for me. What do you get under the radical when you plug that into your calculator? Negative 4 plus or minus the square root of... No one has their calculators out. 368, how about? Hopefully you're getting that. Um, over eight. Now you gotta break down 368. Anyone know the perfect square that 368 is divisible by? 16. Mm -hmm. Is that a random guess or did you just, good job. It is 16, um, right? Let me double check. I think it's 16. Yep, 16 and 23. Um, okay, so this is 4 rad 23. So we're doing negative 4 plus or minus 4 rad 23 over 8. What does that become? Everything's divisible by what? Four, right? So if I divide this by four, I get negative one plus or minus. This would be one times rad 23. So you can just write rad 23 over two. We divide it by four, right? Um, and that is as simple as you can go. Good? So this is the breakdown of the square root of 368. Square root of 16 is 4, and then times rad 23. And then you added, and then you divided by 4? I divided everything by 4. Yeah. You can put the 1 there. It's not wrong. Not that one, but um, the negative. So I'm, this is like the fraction negative 4 eighths. That is a negative one half. So the one and the two. Okay. Right? I'm just reducing a fraction. So just imagine as a fraction, just reducing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if you like it better, you're welcome to do this. Oops. Negative four over eight plus or minus four rad twenty three over eight. That would be the same thing. And then maybe you see it a little easier as a fraction. That'd be a negative one half plus or minus the square root of 23 over um, 2, sorry, because the 4 over 8 would be 2. So, I mean, this or that are essentially the same thing. If you like it better that way, you're welcome to do that. Okay, determinant, discriminant, sorry, <laughs> determinant's a different thing. Um, the discriminant here, what do you do? Right, with b squared minus 4ac, right? That's the only thing you need from the quadratic formula on this. So b squared, that would be negative 4 squared minus 4 times 2 times 3. Simplify that. So 16 minus 24. So you get a negative 8 for that. What is the number of solutions if your discriminant is negative 8? no solution. You cannot have a negative under a radical, sorry, no real solution. Like I said, next week I'll show you where there is a solution to that, but and, and we're not there yet. Can no I real also solution. explain who asked? Sure, like yep, tell us all about it. Um, any questions on any of that? Okay. Do you want me to walk you through the graphing problem? Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, I'm going to stop sharing that and start sharing this.
Okay, so the graphing problem, uh, we'll just do the first one. 4x squared plus 3x minus 1. Um, so do you remember where you start? Uh, at the y. y equals, okay, you're going to clear out what you have in the y1. Remember, you want your plots off, so don't have a black box where your plots are. Y2 will always be 0. Y1 is going to be 4. X is next to alpha squared plus 3X minus 1. Okay, so you should have those two equations in your calculator. What do you do next? How do you graph it? Um, zoom, six. zoom six. Zoom six should look like that. Oh, mine is moving fast right now. Um, so from here, remember what we're trying to find. We're trying to find an intersect. So you're gonna go, who knows the, the combo? Second. Then what? Trace. Then what? Five, intersect, right? We're trying to find the intersect. So I can trace five. Enter how many times? Three. Three times. Enter, enter, enter. So you get, for the first one, x equals 0 0.25. Okay, so that's one answer. Um, now you're going to do second trace five again, but we're going to arrow over to the other intersect. So just have to be closer to that one. It doesn't have to be right on top. And then enter three times. One, two, three. And that one is negative one. Okay, you're looking for your zeros. You're looking for where your y value is zero, which is your x-intercept. Questions on that? Arrow to the left if you were at the right one already. And then enter, enter, enter. Of what? Give me a number. Sure. Um, okay, so let me reshare here. Um, did you want another graphing one, Chris? Is that what you said? Well, yeah, I want another. Well, I really just how did you get to the, to the actual graph? Zoom six. Okay, um, number five. So none of those are perfect squares, but if you multiply that, you get the square root of 75. What perfect square can you divide 75 by? 25. 25. So this would be 25 and 3, which is 5 rad 3. Okay, finish the worksheet. Do the, like, seven book problems. Quizzes Monday. We'll spend the first 20 minutes or so on Monday going over any questions you have. Okay? I'm slightly confused on the calculator part.